Welcome back to Unbelievable English. My name's Adam, and today we're going to be talking about code names. We're going to be spies. Spies trying to contact each other and send messages without the other team finding out. So, let's go learn about Vlada Chavadal's game, Code Names. All right, guys, let's talk about setup for code names. Code names is a very simple, very fun game. We have tiles for the red team, tiles for the blue team. We have one double agent, and we'll talk about them in a minute. We've got one uh, assassin, and we've got civilians. We've got our timer, and we have our key, and we have 25 randomly chosen double-sided cards that we put in a five by five grid. That's all we need to do for setup. Once we have this, we are ready to go. The only other thing we need to do is we need to have a key. We're gonna choose one of these keys. We're gonna put it on this stand and make sure that only two players in the whole game ever see it. Or one, if you have one spy master. But we'll get to that in a second. So we're set up, we're ready to go. We're going to choose our key. The key is super important in this game. It gives us a lot of very important information. You'll notice that some of the keys have a red uh, uh, leaning and some of them have a blue leaning. If it is a red key, that means that the red team is going to go first. It also means that the red team has one more spy to find than the other team. If it's a blue key, then the opposite is true. The blue team will go first, and the blue team will have an extra uh, um, spy that they're gonna have to locate out of these 25. Once you've chosen your key and you've chosen your spy masters, this is a game for two teams. You could play with one team of two players, one spy master, one player, but generally speaking, more players, more fun, right? So you want two teams and each team Usually each team is going to have one spy master. Uh, sometimes when I play with my students, I act as the spy master for both teams, especially at the beginning when we first start playing to show them how to do it. But any way you do it works just fine. So you have your key. You've randomly chosen it so nobody else can see it. Only the spy masters will see it. Once you've chosen that key, you can spin it around. You can however you want, choose randomly what direction it's gonna sit in. Once it is in that setting, it's not gonna move again, okay? It has to stay like this. Now, generally speaking, it would sit like this and only the spy masters would be able to see it. But for our purposes, we're gonna put it down like that. So based on this key, I know that this is a red team card, a blue team card, civilian, Civilian, blue team, red team, civilian, blue team, civilian, blue team, assassin. Red, 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 blue. And just following the positions on the grid, we know which team is which and where things are, or the spy masters know. And the spy master's job is to give clues that are going to help their team find all of their spies first and without finding the assassin by accident. If you ever uh, uh, choose the assassin card, your team loses, game over. So let's see how that would work. Let's say this is a blue card, so I will be the blue team first, and we've got one extra blue spy that we need to find because we are the first team. And so I'm gonna look, I've got copper, which is a kind of metal, I've got ruler, which is either a thing that we measure with or perhaps the leader of a nation. Chocolate, kangaroo, not Moscow. Never want to choose, never want to give anything close to Moscow. Brush, ham, air, fall, nurse. Now it's important to look at your cards, but it's also important to look at all of the cards. Because if I say something like, I know that I have kangaroo here, right? So, uh, and perhaps, let's see, chocolate, ham, so maybe I would say, kangaroo, animal one. That means that there's a clue, the clue is animal and I'm only referring to one card in the game. 
one card on the board that I want them to find. But if I say animal, look, there's also shark here. So my team might pick shark and then that would be just a civilian. So I don't want to do that. I don't ever want to uh, give a clue that's going to lead to two different uh, potential outcomes. I want to be as specific as I can, as often as I can. Now, this game does require a bit of a stretch. You've got to really try it. And that's what I love about it. You're creating connections between things that might not otherwise have connections. That's really good for your brain. It's really good for learning languages. It's a lot of fun. So you can do uh, clues that only have one answer, but it's more fun. It's more of a challenge to do more. So let's see what we can get. We've got air and fall. I don't see anything else that might get this. Maybe, oh. so maybe with air and fall, I might say hi. Hi is my clue. Hi. Now, I can't use two words. I can't use any word that's on the board and I can't use any piece of a word that's on the bar. So I see skyscraper here. I can't say sky, right? And maybe skyscraper is, a, maybe this was a bad clue. My team might think skyscrapers are high. So maybe they would choose skyscraper and air. Uh-oh, well, skyscraper belongs to the other team and air is ours. And that's how it would look on the board after they had chosen their two. The spy masters would let everybody know how they did and then the next team would have a turn. So now it's the red team's turn. Let's see what we can do for them. We'll just do one more and then we'll stop for today. Uh, they've got board. They've got capital, they've got hand. No, they don't have hand, they have bank. Bank and cliff, ooh. Um, death, ooh. Hmm. Maybe I might say, let's see, capital, board. So this would be hard for some of my students, but I might say something like money to, because capital is a fancy word that can mean money as well as a place where people live. And bank are both from my team. So if my team was smart enough to get it, maybe they don't know capital. They're confused by capital, but they know bank. So maybe they say, okay, you said two, we're only gonna choose one bank. Well then, there you go, we got it. Great. So that's how we would play. The first team to, to find all of their spies is the winner. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. All right, guys. This was a really quick one. It's a very easy game to learn and play. I hope you get to enjoy it. I'll see you here next time at Unbelievable English. Bye.